Real Davy Crockett was a backwoodsman born in the mountains. His life was devoted to hunting, trapping, and building. He lived a very rugged life. After his death, tales of his life were exaggerated into a book called Davy Crockett's Almanac. Davy Crockett came from a comet that hit the top of a Tennessee mountain. He landed with a thump and a boom. He could carry thunder in his fists and carry lightning in his fingers. I could slide down the slippery ends of rainbows. I'm half horse, half alligator, and a bit of a snapping turtle. I could outrun, outlick, out and out holler any ring-tailed roarer in the east of the Mississippi. I'm half varmint too. When I was a baby, my cradle was a was a shell of 600 pound hurdle. When I was a boy, I ate so much bear meat and drank so much buffalo milk, I could whip my weight in wildcats. It was a feisty little thing. It's no surprise that he weighed 200 pounds when he was eight years old, <clears throat> fatso. I love to brag about things that I could lick from wildcats to grizzly bears. Sometimes my bragging got me in big trouble. Once I had to wrangle with the big eater of the forest the big, the biggest panther on his side of the Mississippi. Bad news to any little warm-blooded, four-legged, squinty-eyed, yellow-bellied creature. One day, when Davy was thumping and bumping through the forest and was very hungry and it was raining, then he saw two eyes. You ready to be in my next meal? Help me, mother. The panther walked towards him, looking at his next meal. Holy panther, oh my. Real sorry about what I said. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. The panther yowled and growled and screeched and screamed and roared and shouted while he begged and begged. He backed away cautiously. Okay, now we're getting serious. Davy Crockett grinded his teeth so loud he sounded like a hundred pound horse power sawmill. Then he ground, growled like 5,000 boulders tumbling down a mountainside. Then, when they began to wrestle for death or dinner, then the panther was about to top, make top meat out of Davy's head, he uppercutted the big beast. The beast yelled for mercy. Please don't hurt me, Davy, please. Then he took the beast home and taught him some manners. As I mentioned before, Davy loved to brag about things, but his bragging sometimes got him into big trouble. With more than just wild creatures, it also nearly ended his political career. It seems that he had run for governor for Tennessee. And that fella is nobody but me. I can sleep under a blanket of snow, out squeeze a bow eye constrictor, and outwit the slayest fox in the woods. I am your man. In one of his speeches, Davy got so carried away that he boasted he once grin an old raccoon at, right out of a tree. And folks, I can grin any dang raccoon out of any dang tree in the whole dang world. If I can't, you can call me a liar and feed me to a bunch of hungry bears in the winter. Well, Davy's opponent recognized that this was his big chance to prove once and for all that Davy C. was nothing but a blowhard and boaster.